Okay, now we're ready to do the repair work on the power supply board from the Samsung 214T power supply that we removed and showed you how to remove in the previous video. This is the power supply board that we'll be working on. Um, the typical failure points on this power supply are the capacitors. Um, on this particular board, I'm not sure how well you can see it in the video, but the capacitors have a very visible bulge on the tops that in indicates that the capacitors have failed. Um, so we'll show you how to replace them. Uh, first thing you need to do is remove the plastic insulator that's on the back of the board. Uh, that's simple to do. Take a pair of needle nose pliers and squeeze these little grommet pieces and poke them back through the board. Uh, these are reusable, so when you go to put it back on, you can just poke them back through the board and it will they will spring back into place. So we remove those four grommets. and then set the insulator to the side. Uh, to do the repair, you will need to have good quality capacitors. Uh, they need to be low ESR, high ripple current, and high temperature varieties, not the standard types like you would be able to get at a local electronics place such as a Radio Shack um, or maybe a Fry's. They would not have the proper type. If you do not get the proper type, they can damage um, the integrated circuits and driver transformers on the board when they fail, and they will fail within uh, a month of, or two of installing them in the board because they're just not designed to hold up under the stresses on the switched mode power supplies. Um, all right, so now we're ready to change them. We have our capacitors and our, our tools ready to go. Um, the easiest way to remove the capacitors is take your soldering iron, heat up one leg of the capacitor, while you're holding it with your fingers, pull that leg through the board, heat up the other leg, pull it through. You may have to work it a little bit to get it out, and then the capacitor will come off the board. Um, we're going to do that with each of the capacitors on the board. Just work them through. Now that we have the capacitors removed from the board, uh, you take your desolder wick. It's basically a copper um, stranded material. Uh, you put it on top of the solder that's remaining on the board. Put your soldering iron there. The wick will suck up the solder and leave you with a nice clean hole to insert your replacement parts into. Uh, we just go through each of the holes on the board where the new capacitors are going to be going. Uh, again, it leaves nice clean holes to insert the new components into. We do have a uh, kit of the necessary capacitors for this repair available in our uh, parts store. We also have uh, the desolder wick, soldering irons, uh, solder, and such if you are not already stocked up and ready to do the, this type of repair. Okay, now we have the holes clean. Now we need to insert our capacitors. Um, on the side of the capacitors, there is a gray stripe on one side. That is the negative side of the capacitor. The um, leads are also, one lead is longer than the other. The longer lead is the positive side, so you can tell which one is positive and negative. On the boards, some boards are going to have a positive um, symbol on the board. Um, some boards are going to have the negative side shaded, as we see here. The negative side is all shaded, so we're just going to insert our capacitors into the proper locations. When you insert the capacitors in, well, looks like I left a little bit of solder on that one. Okay. 
be sure you have the correct polarity or when you power up the board for the first time the new capacitors that you just purchased will short out and then you'll have to get new capacitors. Um, what we're doing on the back one, you're just folding the leads to the side. Then once we do the soldering, we'll come back with our wire snips and snip them short. So we'll replace our two last capacitors in, fold the leads back, Now we'll take our soldering iron and lead-free solder and solder the connections back. Basically you put your soldering iron on the connection, it heats up momentarily, you just touch the solder to it and a small amount will flow. Uh, once we've done the soldering, take our wire snips and snip off the remainder of the capacitor leads. Reinstall the plastic shield. And there we go, a repaired power supply board. I'll take it back over to the monitor now, install it, and check it out. Make sure we have a good monitor.